Good evening, dear students. This is the last part of the lecture, what I already completed. So in this lecture, in this session, I'm going to discuss some of the questions and answers to them. So it's a kind of quiz program. In this, this quiz is related to all the SLOs I already covered related to new drug development. In the last few sessions, I discussed about the need for new drugs, methodologies used in development of new drugs, steps involved in conducting clinical trials and marketing of the drug, the regulations that are regulating the approval of drugs and conduct of clinical research in India and other parts of the world. And also we discussed about principles of good clinical practice. Now in this quiz, I'm going to have five questions and I will discuss the answers for these questions. The first question is related to identify the wrong answer related to new, develop, new drug development, okay? New drug is developed to avoid drug-drug interactions, increase patient compliance, treatment of new indication like use in pregnancy, pediatrics, and geriatric population, increase drug resistance, okay? So in this, in all the four options, which is the wrong options, okay? So now let me tell you, okay? So which is the wrong answer in this, okay? So in this, Wrong answer is increase drug resistance, okay? No drug is developed to increase drug resistance. That's why increase in drug resistance is the wrong answer in this, okay? So generally, we developed drugs to avoid some of the existing problems, okay? So avoid drug-drug interactions. If the one drug is having many more drug interactions, then it's a bad drug because that's going to affect the patient safety, okay? So patient safety, or if you use this in nowadays, every patient is suffering from more than one disease. So in that condition, if a drug is having interactions in one or the other way, Either it can be pharmacokinetic or pharmacodynamic interactions. So in that case, then, you know, when you are administering that particular drug, you have to be very careful. So you would like to have a drug which is not having drug-drug interaction. That's why new drug development can be done to avoid drug-drug interactions and then increase patient compliance, okay? So definitely, if the patient is not able to tolerate particular drug, then the treatment will be failure. So to improve the patient acceptability, we will do new drug development. Next one is treatment of new indication like use in pregnancy, pediatric patients, geriatric patients. See, generally, obviously, whenever we develop a new drug, generally we don't do research in pregnancy, pediatric and geriatrics in the first instance. But once the drug is successfully marketed in, in, in a particular part of the world, then they will start further research to increase the indications like use in pregnancy, pediatrics, and geriatrics, okay? So to add additional indications, so we do the new drug development work, okay? But we never do the work to increase the drug resistance, okay? So we always want better drugs. So in fact, we do the reverse. 
so we do the new drug development to decrease the drug resistance okay so that's why increase in drug resistance is the wrong option here okay next question number 2 limitations of drugs can be corrected by except okay so limitations of drugs can be corrected by except okay increasing the dose new drug development analogs derivatives substitutes short acting or long acting okay so now i'll try to explain you this question and the answer also okay so generally a drug can have limitations okay so these limitations like you know uh, these limitations can be corrected by doing new drug development okay so suppose if some drug is having some bad thing so the to counter that bad thing we do the new drug development so that's why it is a right you know this option is correct okay then analogs and derivatives and substitutes okay so if the existing drugs are already having some limitations then you know we'll try to add on some uh, you know suppose if it is short acting we would like to make it long acting if it is long acting then we would like to make it short acting or intermediate acting or if some adverse events are there then we would like to we would like to develop a drug without adverse drug reactions like this so we'll try to you know improve it by adding some you know uh, chemical groups or fat groups or proteins or carbohydrates into that particular uh, you know molecule and then we'll develop analogs analogs means the same similar drug but with little bit of structural variations and the derivatives of that particular existing drugs are synthetic form so if it is a naturally available maybe a plant product or animal product then you can develop a, a derivative of it by doing the synthetic form of it then substitutes okay substitutes of the existing drugs okay so if they can act in the similar manner but in a better manner okay so we can have a substitutes of it so in that way this option is also a, a it's a right way of correcting the limitations of a particular drug next is short acting or long acting so you can either make it long acting or short short acting so that it can meet your therapeutic requirement so in that way you are still doing the good job that's why so this is also one of the ways of addressing the limitations of a particular drug okay but if you see the the first option that is increasing the dose we never want to you know unnecessarily increase the dose okay increasing the dose for addressing the limitations because if you increase the dose then there can be chances of development of adverse drug reactions okay so limitations of a particular drug need not be always addressed by increasing the dose that's why it is considered as the uh, you know wrong uh, option so that's why it is considered to be the answer for this question okay next next question is new drug can be identified by how to identify the new drug by random screening serendipity discovery by chance then synthetic method recombinant dna technology modifications of structure of existing drugs all of the above so now you can have the option so the best option here is all the methods can be used for developing the new drug new drug can be identified by identified by random screening so you just keep uh, you know take on you you can take some chemicals and then keep doing random screening for their uh, activity or you can do some solubility or uh, uh, you know water solubility or alcohol solubility like this you know solubility test or uh, stability test or you can uh, see whether you know like you know you can do the uh, random screening using computer technology also so like this you know computational technologies if you put then you know it will give some answers accordingly you can think of developing a new drug randomly okay next is serendipity okay you wanted to do something but accidentally it gets into a 
better discovery. Okay, so suppose you wanted to treat Alzheimer's, but you may develop a drug for heart. Suppose uh, that uh, like that it happened actually. Okay, so sildenafil was developed for some other purpose, but it became useful for uh, you know impotence. Okay, so they wanted to do the treatment of pulmonary you know artery uh, pulmonary hypertension, but uh, in the event of you know inventing uh, some drug for pulmonary hypertension, they identified that it is a very good vasodilator, scapulary dilator, and then it increased the uh, you know um, uh, blood flow to the penis and other areas, and then increased the sustainability of the erection. So uh, erectile dysfunction was corrected by sildenafil, like this. Okay, so you wanted to detect some things, then. It went into in a different direction. So uh, uh, discovery by chance or accidental discovery. Next is synthetic. So you keep on synthetic. So the existing molecules are already there and you keep on modifying and develop it like atropin to homotropin, tropic amide. So like that. So you can develop new drugs or derivatives of the existing drugs. Okay, next is recombinant DNA technology you can use for developing the new drugs. Modification of the structure, that's the structure activity relationship, okay? So you keep on modifying the structures, then you may get into better drug discovery. So like this, okay, better drug can be identified with all. So that's why the new drug can be identified with all these methods. That's why so all the methods is the right answer. So next question, next question is, Following are the components of preclinical testing except, okay? So all of the below are components of preclinical testing, but not the one, okay? Which is that one, which is not related to preclinical testing. So let us see. Acute toxicity testing and assessment of safety. Okay, next is subacute and chronic toxicity test, phase three clinical trial, and special toxicological studies like a reproduction, a reproductive toxicity, teratogenicity, then mutagenicity, carcinogenicity. So let us see which is the right answer. So answer for this question. So you can see here in the preclinical testing, see the main objective of preclinical testing is to find out the safety in the living animals. Okay, so safety in the living animals basically or isolated cells also. So what do we want to do the test? Basically, we want to see, suppose if you give one dose, is there any immediately something wrong is happening? That is acute toxicity testing. Then assessment of the safety is done. Yes, pre in the preclinical testing, we do this testing. Next one is subacute and chronic toxicity test. Okay, after doing the acute test toxicity study, again, you want to do, okay, after single dose, is there any additional dose you can give and see any additional toxicity uh, act, toxic activities like you know subacute toxicity of maybe for one week or maximum uh, three weeks or four weeks like 28 days up to 28 days you can do uh, the subacute then chronic toxicity you can do up to six months you know chronic toxicity studies you can do or sometimes for years also okay so like this chronic toxicity so you administer the drug for longer period longer and longer period then you try to find out especially these tests can be done only in the preclinical testing third option is phase three clinical trials see clinical trial means this is done in human beings okay so phase three clinical trial is done in human beings so uh, preclinical testing is done in animals so in that way the except that question. So if you read this question, following are the components of preclinical pre testing except. So that's why phase three clinical trial is the answer for this question. Okay, so clinical trials are done in humans. That's why phase three clinical trial is the answer for this question. But let us see the fourth option, why it is not, not the correct answer. So special toxicological studies like reproduction toxicity, uh, teratogenicity, mutagenicity, carcinogenicity. All these tests also can be done only in the animals, not in the human beings. Nobody will allow us to do the toxicity studies in humans. Okay, so we can't kill humans in it for conducting the reproductive toxicity studies or teratogenicity, mutagenicity, carcinogenicity. No, we don't want anyone to develop ca cancer or any genetic alterations or birth defects 
or reproductive toxicity. So these can be done only in the animals. So that's why, so three types of studies can be done in animals, that is acute toxicity, assessment of safety, subacute toxicity, chronic toxicity, then special toxicological studies like reproduction, teratogenicity, mutagenicity, carcinogenicity. So only one that is done in the pre uh, clinical, that is in the human beings, in the options given here is phase three clinical trial. That's why it is the answer for this question. Now, last question we have good clinical practice means what is good clinical practice okay good clinical practice means standard for design conduct performance monitoring auditing recording analysis reporting of clinical trials that provides assurance that the data and the reported results are credible accurate and that the rights and integrity and confidentiality of trial subjects are protected. Okay, so here you can see that all these are parts of the good clinical practice principles. Okay, so principles of good clinical practice in conducting the clinical trial or conducting the clinical research activities are related to, so standard for designing the clinical trial Okay, and then conducting the clinical trial, performance of the clinical trial, monitoring of the clinical trial, auditing, okay, checking the data, recording of the clinical trial, so means for, you know, documenting the uh, data, then analysis and reporting of the data of clinical trials that provide assurance that the data and the reported results are credible, okay, so they are credible, so that gives the assurance to the no public accurate so so that you know there is no uh, maleficence is uh, there or uh, everything is properly documented accurately reported and the rights and uh, in uh, while doing this we have maintained the rights and the integrity confidentiality of the clinical trials are uh, trial subjects are protected so uh, it is definitely the answer is it is the true answer okay so the good clinical practice means this is the definition of good clinical practice, what I just mentioned here. So that's why it is a true uh, answer for this. Okay, I think we have come to the end of the clinical. Uh, uh, we have come to the end of the topic of today's. Okay, so in that way, I think I uh, have completed the new drug development topic. So in the next uh, topic, uh, in the next class, I'm going to start the roots of drug administration. Very soon, I'll be seeing you. So looking forward to again, uh, continue my lecture series. Okay, all the best uh, for your first internals that is coming up. So we'll see you again.